Hi folks, this is going to be the first of a series of videos I want to make about using and understanding your test equipment. Um, you will often hear me say that you need to know your test equipment's attributes and its limitations. And if you understand the basics of how your test equipment works, it'll give you more confidence in making measurements and not being afraid that you're gonna screw something up. Um, I, I was there at one time, I understand how you feel. Um, we're gonna start with the digital multimeter. It was a game changer. Before that, we had analog DOMs, or volt ohm milliammeters. And they were fine as far as they went, but they had some limitations. They had a fairly low input impedance, and I'm gonna bring that up later because that's a very important point. Um, they were not as accurate. You had to read on a scale, determine which scale you were using. Um, I will always have one on my bench because they have their place. But when the digital multimeter came along, it changed everything. Now you just had to glance at it and see exactly what it was reading. They're more accurate, and they're also less prone to damage. Uh, an analog meter, if dropped, sometimes will just kill it. If you have it in the wrong mode, say resistance, you read voltage, it's not going to like that. You're going to let the smoke out of it. Digital meters are much more forgiving this way. You can cause some damage with, with one, and I'll explain that uh, toward the last part of this video. But um, when I mention input impedance, this is a very important key factor because when you connect your test equipment to a circuit that you're looking at, it becomes part of that circuit. So having a very high input impedance makes it more non-intrusive. This is why we use times 10 probes on the oscilloscopes. This is why meters like digital multimeters that have a input impedance in the neighborhood of 10 megohms are so much more desirable. This is why they came out with vacuum two voltmeters because they have an input impedance of around 11 megohms. It's less likely to disturb the circuit and foul up your readings. You'll get a more accurate reading with a high impedance device. So anyhow, I'm going to shut down now. We're going to take a look at a couple of meters on the bench, and I'm going to explain how they work. Okay, so here we have two meters on the bench. Anyone who's watched any of my videos has seen my Fluke 177. We go back a long way. This meter has been a real workhorse for me, and indeed, your digital multimeter is the most important piece of test equipment on your bench because you're fine, you will find that you do a good 95% of your troubleshooting with just your multimeter. A scope is an indispensable piece of test equipment. There are things that you must have a scope for, but for the vast majority of troubleshooting, your digital multimeter is your go-to tool. Now, there's not a lot I need to say about DC volts other than you just set it, take your reading, and read it right off the scale. This one also has a dedicated millivolt scale, which is really handy for setting bias and offset in audio amplifiers, which is predominantly what I do. So, I'm going to go now, we're going to spend a little more time on AC volts. But, the one thing you need to know is DC volts is the little engine that could inside your meter. Most functions inside the meter depend on the DC volts function. Okay, AC volts in this meter, this is a true RMS multimeter. Now, what does RMS mean? In a nutshell, AC RMS volts will do the equivalent amount of work in a circuit as the equivalent amount of DC volts. Call it a, a DC equivalence. That's a simple way of putting it. There's math involved. I don't want to get into that. Just know that that's basically how it works. And in this meter, there's a true RMS converter, and it puts outputs DC volts, and the DC function in your meter converts it and displays it as AC. Okay? The other thing you need to think about is since we're talking about AC volts, we have a voltage level, but we also have a frequency. And your meter will have a certain threshold where it begins to lose accuracy. Now, my meter is the Fluke 177. If you look at the AC volts function, it says it's 1% accurate plus three counts between 45 hertz and 500 hertz. These meters are generally made for the electrical trade, so they're gonna be used 
mostly at 60 hertz. When we're doing audio, though, we deal from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And when we get between 500 and 1 kilohertz, now it's 2%. And I'm going to demonstrate to you how it begins to drop off when your frequency climbs. So I have a meter set up now that's putting out 1 volt RMS. Okay? So we are at 100 hertz. And you can see my meter is reading about 1 volt. So watch what happens when we go to 1 kilohertz. Starting to drop off a little bit. Let's go to 10 kilohertz. Okay, that's about half of what it was. And as you can imagine, 20, it doesn't even really see it. Now, I have a Keithley benchtop meter that is designed to go to 100 kilohertz. And I can put this same signal in there, and you'll see that it doesn't blink an eye. I'm going to go back to 100 hertz. Okay, we're going to go to the Keithley. Let's take a look at that. Okay, 100 hertz, 1 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz. This meter would be fine for measuring off of my dummy load to give me wattage readings. My fluke would not be. This is why I say you need to know your test equipment's attributes and its limitations. Okay, what I want to talk about now is the resistance range of your ohmmeter and how that actually goes about measuring resistance. Now, when you go into resistance mode, your meter puts out a known current, goes through the resistor, and it measures the voltage that's dropped by that resistor. Again, the DC function is doing the work in the meter. So, I have this meter currently hooked up to the current input of this meter. And we go to ohms, you'll see it puts out about 1 milliamp. Okay? The 11.1 ohms is measuring is the shunt inside this meter. And we'll talk about that when we get to the current ranges. If I change the range of the meter, you'll notice that the current drops. As the range goes up, the current goes down. Okay, and this meter is not going to really read much further past there. So I'm just going to put it back to auto, and you'll see we have our 1 milliamp. Now, I want to show you what happens when we actually measure a resistor. So I'm going to take these out here. And I have a 100 ohm resistor. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put this meter in volts mode. And then we are going to measure this 100 ohm resistor with this meter. So let me plug my probes in here. Okay. And now. When I measure this, you'll see the 100 ohms here, but take a look at the other meter. We have about 100 ohms, and we are dropping about 100 millivolts. So you can see how you're actually measuring the voltage drop by placing a known current through the unknown resistance. Just applying Ohm's law. That said, I got to tell you a funny story. Back years ago, I was co-owner of a um, metrology or calibration lab and we had gotten in some very low value fuses I don't remember how low value but somebody was checking them with an analog meter and saying these fuses are defective from the factory everyone I've tested is bad it's like dude you're blowing the fuses with the meter funny little story not so funny when you're paying for the fuses anyhow the last thing we're going to talk about is current mode Okay, when we use the current mode on our meter, you'll notice you have to change the leads from here 
to one of these two positions. This one will measure up to 400 milliamps and it's good for low current measurements. This one is good up to 10 amps. They basically have different shunts inside the meter and basically all a shunt is is a very low value resistor that is very precise and will carry the rated current. And again, we're just going to measure the voltage drop across that internal shunt. This is where your DC function is the workhorse. It's going to tell you actually what your current is. Now, I'm going to put this meter into ohms. And we're going to take a look and see if it'll measure these shunts. I'm not sure how low value they are. We may not be able to see them. Kind of thing I should probably do before we get hooked up here. Okay, so my 10 amp shunt is 0.1 ohms or 100 milliohms. And I get nothing on the 400 ohm. And I'll bet you it's because the fuse is blown. These are fused because, think about it, if you're in the 10 amp range here, and you have a set of probes in here, you accidentally go to read a DC voltage, you're going to see sparks because that's close to a dead short. That's a tenth of an ohm, a hundredth of an ohm. So I probably inadvertently blew the fuse here. I don't believe the meter needs to be in this range. No. So I probably have a blown fuse in here. But that's one danger with the digital multimeter. And as you can see, it's easy to do. I probably blew the fuse in here. So anyhow, this is all I really wanted to talk to you about. I wanted to give you an idea of how these meters do what they do so you have a little more confidence in your measurements. Now, we looked at the um, specs for AC. As I mentioned earlier, your AC and DC input impedance are greater than 10 megaohm. Get that down where you have a better chance of seeing it. So these aren't going to disturb your circuit. And in AC or DC voltage mode, you can go across the power supplies in the stereo that you're testing. Not going to hurt anything. You go from the positive side to the negative. It'll just tell you the total voltage. You're in no danger of shorting anything out. That's the beauty of having a high input impedance. Um, the other thing I'll just mention in passing is your diode test mode also puts out current. And it puts out enough voltage. Let's see here to turn on any diodes or transistors. Let's go to volts. Yeah, this puts out about seven volts, 7.2 volts. So it'll turn on a semiconductor junction and you can test LEDs in the diode mode and they'll actually light. So that's as far as I wanna go with digital multimeters. Um, some have way more functions than uh, this particular one does. This will do capacitance, so it will also test transistors. Uh, and have other functions on there. But for general purpose work, something like any of these would be fine. So I'm going to cut it off right now. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. And as always, I like to give back to the community that has given me so much. Thanks much. Take care.